so I felt like making this video to explain why I understand how the officers that killed Eric Garner did not respond like everyone would want them to have responded when he said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And many people look at the video from a non-law enforcement perspective and they, they see it and they say, you know, he said, I can't breathe. Why didn't they immediately go into lifesaver mode? Um, not the first reaction that any cop is going to have to that phrase in particular. Um, and many people would say, you know, if, if that's not your first reaction, then, then there's something wrong with training and, and whatnot. But I'll try to impart onto you all how th there is something wrong, and it's not that they didn't respond to that phrase. Um, and this is not to say that the officer that used the rear naked choke that killed him was right in using that maneuver, or uh, that the other officers that watched him do it were, were right in letting him do that, um, because that one officer was really uh, acting outside of the boundaries of what he should have been doing, and he and the other officers there should have been uh, having trials right about now. And that's why we have protests. But, in those protests, they keep chanting, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Right? In my job, I run across a lot of people who are on M1 holds, or uh, alcohol drunk holds, you know, and they don't want to be there. Okay? they're being held against their will by the law. Now, they might not be under arrest, but they are there against their will, legally. And they will say things in order to get out of the situation that they're in. One of the things that they will say is, I can't breathe. Now, you don't take this from, from a healthcare perspective or from a law enforcement perspective, or both, in my case, you don't take this to mean that they actually cannot breathe. If somebody can speak, use air to force through their vocal cords, and say that they can't breathe, and then the next thing you hear is a gasp, they can in fact breathe, they're having difficulty breathing maybe, and you do need to get some medical attention to them, but it's not something that you can set aside everything for. Like, if somebody says, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, that's not the cue to say, okay, all officers clear off of this guy and give him a lot of space so he can just run away from us. You know, that's not my cue uh, in, in my work environment to say, okay, well, I'm just going to leave you alone so that you can run out the door, run out the emergency room, and you know, we'll never see you again. You don't back off at that point. You ask for medical assistance. Um, some variations that I have heard of utterances that are not really what the, the patient means and not what they're getting at. Um, some of them might be, I can't stay in this room, it's driving me crazy. You know, I hate hospitals. You, you got to let me out of here. You got to let me out of here. You got to put me in another room. You got to, you know, um, all the way to, uh, I have to go to the bathroom right now, right now. You know, get this IV out of me. Get the, you know, take me out of these restraints. Um, these restraints are too hard. They're, 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 they're cutting off my circulation. That's the one that I, I really uh, take offense to because I'm the one... Uh, measuring my fingers inside the restraints to make sure that they aren't cutting off circulation. And the only thing that is cut cutting off circulation is the fact that they're pulling very hard against 
the restraints and, and the bed that they're in. That's what is causing it, not the fact that the restraints are there. Um, they, they will say a lot of things in order to get your guard down. Okay? You do have to take into account that there are health issues that are going to arise from restraining a person. You know? It's not ever something that doesn't leave a bruise, you know, there's always going to be some health aspect to it. Anxiety, even, you know, if, if you restrain someone, they're going to say, I have anxiety, you know, this is driving me nuts. And that is something that you, you do need to take into account. You need, do need to tell a nurse or a doctor and they'll get them some Ativan or some Haldol or some Seroquel or something, you know. Um, and you can use a calming tone, you know, you can get them a warm blanket, you know, try to make them comfortable, but they're going to say things that they do not mean literally. I can't breathe, I can't breathe is not literally I can't breathe okay another thing that uh, you need to take into consideration in the context of this is he was on video and it's very possible that he knew that he was on video you know the officers knew that they were being videoed you know the the guy that was standing there videoing the whole thing they knew that they, they were being videoed, and so they could have, you know, thought that he was acting for that camera. So, the way that I understand what they didn't respond to in a way that would have saved his life is that day in, day out, these officers probably encounter boys crying wolf and it can be something like oh these handcuffs are too tight they're hurting me from almost every person that they arrest oh this you got to get these off you got to loosen them you know from almost every person that they arrest so they they start to go numb to it you know Every person that they're tackling, saying, I can't breathe, you know, you're hurting my arm, you're hurting my arm, you know, and all of those, for the most part, are not exactly what they mean. They, they, they really mean, I don't like being arrested, please use less force so that I can get out of this situation. That doesn't mean you don't do something about what they said and investigate whether or not you really did hurt their arm or whether or not you are cutting off their circulation or whether or not there is some issue with their breathing. In fact, if I hear somebody say, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and they're still breathing, I start to check for signs of heart attack. You know, I start to check for you know, other things other than what they're saying because they are obviously in distress. It just might not be what they're talking about. Now, in Eric Garner's case, maybe his, you know, trachea was broken and he was having difficulty breathing and they needed to check. They needed to check and that, that he died. But... Hopefully this this teaches a lot of officers that the job will grind you down and it will make you numb to the community that you're supposed to be serving. You know, it will make you ignore people. It will, will make you rush to conclusions that are wrong. You know, and... Part of the problem is every other person that those policemen interacted with before that that said, 
I can't breathe that could. You know, part of the problem is people who will treat being under arrest as something that they can maybe skate out of, 